doing this morning? Warm? Good. Okay, hey, I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you're at church this morning. I believe you're in the right spot. Um, if you're visiting this morning, I want to extend a welcome to you. And I just want to, uh, if you're visiting, um, you know, you could have been anywhere else this morning. Um, warm, but you're here. And I'm, just, I'm glad that you're, you're joining us this morning. If, if you um, are part of our church family, but you couldn't get out this morning or, um, or you're sick and taking care of those who are sick, uh, and if you're joining us online, I want to say welcome. I'm glad that you're joining us online. Or if you're over in the gym, glad you're joining us uh, from the gym. It's good to see you. I want you to, um, I'll talk about announcements here in a little bit, but we're, we're here to, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we're here this morning. And so I want to, I want to begin by having you stand up. I want to talk to you for a moment and encourage you and I want to do that by looking at Psalm 13. It says this, O oh Lord, how long will you forget me? I, I said I want to encourage you, but this psalm begins with all these questions. How long are you going to forget me, God? Forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy COVID have the upper hand. It doesn't say that, but that's what it feels like. Turn and answer me, O Lord my God. Restore the sparkle to my eye or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat. Don't let COVID gloat saying we've defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. But I will trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he's good to me. As I know with COVID, it's easy to get discouraged. Man, it's easy. But what these, uh, what this psalm does, it's a lament. And what a lament does is it pulls back the curtain and it lets us see what's really going on here. So it sure looks like COVID is winning the day. It sure looks like discouragement is winning the day. But what a lament does is it pulls back the curtain. And as we're lamenting and saying, God, why, how much longer there is still this trust in God's unfailing love. It's actually his covenantal faithfulness. He's always been faithful. He will be faithful. There's always a but God in these laments. And so I know we all come in, COVID is just, man, it just seems to be having its way. We're asking this question, but our turn today is, but God. And so we come in on Sunday morning and we make that declaration. I know it's going on out there, but God, but God, he's going to restore. We trust in his unfailing love and we will sing to the Lord because he's good to us. And so I don't know. Um, what burdens you bring in, whether they're heavy, they're light this morning, or if you bring in a, your, your faith, you have a lot of faith, or you bring in just a little bit of faith this morning. I don't know what, how you come in this morning, but I just want us to make that turn. So that's, that it is going on, but God is good. He's faithful. And the response, I'll trust, I'll rejoice, and I will sing. And so we come in here to sing these songs, and it is. It's almost like a declaration of, of uh, resistance to what's going on out there. We still believe that God is good. Amen? So let's begin with our confession, where we confess that this is all about Jesus. It's out of Hebrews. Let's say this together. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance. And through the son, he created the universe. The son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. This shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, 
just as the name God gave him is greater than their names. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning, and we step out of our kind of normal daily routine, and we pause and we reflect, and we declare through song and through worship that you're a good God. And so, Lord, as we come in this morning, we do bring in our burdens, and some of them are really heavy, Lord, and some of them are light. But Lord, we come and we lay them at your feet. And Lord, we, some of us come in here with a whole bunch of faith. We're ready to worship. And some of us come dragging ourselves in, wondering where you're at. But Lord, I pray that this morning that you would show up in a special way, that you would speak to us, that you would encourage us, that you would strengthen us. And Lord, that you would shape us to look more like your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises, Hosanna, Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you in your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new, only Jesus, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. As when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna. Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. God is a great God. This morning, I'm going to be reading from John 1, verses 29 through 42. Listen as God's word is read this morning. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I told you about. After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. I didn't know him, but I came baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. 
And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he rested on him. I didn't know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water told me, The one you see the Spirit descending and resting on, he is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John was standing with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this and followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and noticed them following him, he asked them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come and you'll see, he replied. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard John and followed him. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought Simon to Jesus. When Jesus saw him, he said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Uh, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer now as we give back to the Lord what he provides for us through the giving of tithes and offerings. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you, God. We thank you for your word in the book of John. And Lord, as it was declared, look, there's the Messiah. And just because of that, people followed him your son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. God, we thank you for the things that you provide for us, the things that, um, the things we need, even the things we want sometimes. And Lord, now we just want to take this time to worship you and giving back to you a portion of what you provide to us. God, we thank you. Lord, we just ask that this offering be given to you as an act of worship, and, Lord, that your church would use what is given in, in, Lord, ways that would be pleasing to you. So, God, we thank you. Lord, we praise you in the name, the name above all names, the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. So let's stand together. Uh, there may be some issues with sound this morning, but we're going to worship and praise him no matter what happens up here. How great. 
Break the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ. My living hope, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living Seal the promise, your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. God, you are my
he's our hope. And we can trust in him because God is faithful. He's shown it throughout the ages. Through his word, he's faithful to his people. And so we worship him. And we give him praise and honor because he is God. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day oh glorious day one day they led him up calvary's mountain one day they nailed him die on a tree suffering anguish despised and rejected bearing our sins my redeemer is he the hand that healed nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day oh glorious day the grave could conceal him no longer one day the stone rolled away from the door then he arose over death he had conquered now is ascended my lord evermore death could not hold him the grave could not keep him from rising again. So living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day, he's coming. Day, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day the trumpet will sound for his coming, one day the skies with his glories will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved one bringing. My Savior Jesus is mine. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. 
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, seated. Kids are dismissed for kids' worship. So, Darren, what was going on with the... Okay. Yeah. Hey, for um, the uh, closing song, can, hey, Darren, I'm, <laughs> can we, can, hey, Darren, can we redo what, the Oh Glorious Day at the end instead of the other song? We'll close with that, okay. Band, put you on alert there. Okay. If uh, the enemy can try to change things up, I can too. I'm going to let him ruin our day. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Genesis chapter 12. As you're turning there, I want to just remind you of a couple things. Uh, we were supposed to start Discover IBC uh, this morning, but due to just things, uh, we're going to postpone that a couple weeks. We'll start on the 30th. We've got two families signed up to go on the 30th and the first Sunday in February, so if you'd like to join those two families, uh, you can you can do that. Just um, we'll we'll repost it so you can sign up for Discover IBC on, on those new dates and join those two families. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that this um, this Easter season on Good Friday, we are going to uh, join with Calvary Baptist Church, just right up the road on our sister churches. They're going to do a Good Friday service. And so we're going to participate in that, and we're going to participate in it in multiple ways. Um, I believe I'll be, you know, sharing some or reading some scripture or doing something. But we also, one of the things that they're trying to do for Easter and for Good Friday is to have a choir sing some special songs that, that Friday night and on Easter Sunday. Um, and so if you would like, they're inviting you to be a part of, of that choir. So it would be kind of a special time where you prepare for Good Friday. And we would all go participate in that Good Friday service together. Um, and so if you have been interested and want to be in a choir, um, they are going to start practicing this Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. And so uh, just I want, because I've heard from, from some of you that you'd like to be a part of a choir. I get questions about our choir. And so this is at least a, a step in that direction of you getting to participate in a choir. They will meet this Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. If you want to be a part of that, um, will you please let Joella know, because um, uh, Josh Tanner over there wants, he just needs to know how much music to print and things like that. So uh, let Joella know so she can let Josh know. Amen? Um, I'm getting feedback. I don't know how to fix it, but I can, I can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. I can get over it, but I just, if there's a way to fix it, that'd be awesome. Okay. All right, so can you still hear me? Or am I off now? Okay, good. That's better. I'm not ringing in my ears. Praise the Lord. See, we're not going to let them ruin everything here. So 19, 
96, take you back to when I started high school. Started in high school 1996, and I was there, graduated for, in 2000. One of the questions I always get is if I played basketball. Yes, I did. And so I made the team my freshman year and had one head coach freshman year. Second year, had a second head coach. My sophomore year, had a second head coach. Junior year, had our third head coach. And then had him for two years. Um, so all that equals lots of losses and uh, lots of discouragement and lots of frustration and a lot of humiliation, actually. So we would, you know, we'd win one game and then we'd go four or five games, six games before we get another win. And, you know, it was just enough to, like, kind of tease us. Like, oh, we can, we can actually get a win. And, and then you, you, we couldn't get a win and it was, it was frustrating and it was humiliating because at the same time, while we were struggling, the girls' team, they were doing great. They went to state my junior, senior year, so they're doing great and like they're packing out the, the gym and we can't get anybody to come because we just can't win. We just cannot win. It was frustrating. And so as the season went on, there was a defining moment my senior year. If I ever get back with my teammates we always talk about this moment this day in practice where because everybody's frustrated everybody's discouraged coach is discouraged we all just have no idea what to do i'm just trying to have fun at practice get through coach you know he, he just gets so frustrated he throws with his hands goes over sits on the bench crosses his legs and he's like guys there's only one person on this team who has a green light and that's this guy right here who's sitting right by me and so, you know, so what he's saying is, this guy is the only guy who could shoot. Get him the ball. And so I just remember all of us other teammates just kind of like, well, well what? What do, what do we do now? So what do, what do you need us for? So what are, what are we? What are we doing here if, like, this is the only guy who can shoot? He's the only one with the green light. What do we do? And it was just a defining moment where, like I said, when I get back with my teammates, if I ever do, um, that's always, that always comes up. That moment and the green light and how we were not the green light. And it sure feels like, like COVID right now gets the green light on everything. It's, it's, the, it's the one teammate that gets to run the, the show and it's doing a real poor job of it. It's, uh, it can be extremely frustrating sometimes feels like a beatdown, doesn't it? You ever feel this way? Um, each time we um, think we're clear, what happens? Omicron, new variant. Okay, we're getting through. We're going we're gonna to get another win. Nope, new variant. Um, everything that we plan here, it feels like, always has an asterisk. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to have service. We're going to do some events. We're going to we're going to have a band, but even that, we're, it all comes with an asterisk. We just have no idea who is going to be able to make it, and if COVID is going to just get the green light, it feels like one win followed by four, five, six losses. Discouragement at all time, high frustrations. And it only feels like you can, I mean, we can only do so much, right, before we kind of throw up our hands. <clears throat> And eventually you give up. And then you come to church. And I'm up here saying, hey, you just need to read your Bible. Come on, just come on, guys. Like, read your Bible. And you're like, Anthony, I, it's like all I can do is to get through the day and to get through the week. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. But uh we we really can get into a, a your body can go into fight or flight mode where you're just surviving each day. Where all you're doing is just, I just got to get through today. I don't like COVID just seems to be running everything. And so I just got to get through today. I just got to survive this day. And what happens is you start operating that, just that fight or flight mode. And you're just operating in the front of your brain. And what happens when you get in that mode is you can't, you can't think about the future. You're just trying to get through each day. And your, your ability to slow down, which is what I keep saying, I slow down, read the word, reflect. I can't, I, I'm just, I just got to get through this next day. The pressure's coming at me. And it's a good thing that gets you through a lot of stress, but 
What's, what we need sometimes is just to slow down and to reflect and to read the Word of God, and it's one of the hardest things to do right now. And what happens, if you're anything like me, enough of this, it just become you just, if, if you begin, if you operate in that fight or flight mode too long, you know what it does to your body? Stresses it out, it makes you sick, you become exhausted, and, and you can't, it's hard to grow. And you know how we, we see it, or how I see it? We did our shoulders slump. Your knuckles are dragging the ground, coming in, because it's just been so long since we just haven't had to deal with it. It can be exhausting. <clears throat> well, I, I want to encourage you, but really I need encouragement. I need some encouragement. I need it. I am so sick of COVID getting the green light. And it's a real challenge that we face, I, th I think. And, and there's a part of me that just wants to be like, I am not going to let it keep me down. I'm not going to let it beat me down. And the only thing I know to do is to turn uh, to the Word of God for, for encouragement. That's all, that's all I know how to do. And that's all I know how to instruct you to do. So this is what we're going to do today, is turn to the Word of God for encouragement. Because here's what I believe. I don't believe that code gets the final word. Amen? And it, it has a word. It has a say. We, we can't get away from it, but it doesn't get the final word in this debate. So there's four things that I've been saying I want to focus on in this series. And so I want to just remind you of these things. There is a God. And this God speaks, and when this God speaks, he speaks what? Truth. And it's good truth. It's, it's desirable truth. It's beautiful truth. It's what you need. And then we respond to God's word. So God is speaking into the situation. He's speaking into your life. And we're going to respond to that in either faith or fear. We're just saying about that. Faith or fear. And today I want to encourage you that when this God is speaking into your life, to respond not in fear, but in faith. And when he says, go, you go. And I want to encourage you this morning by looking at the father of our faith, Abraham. I'm calling him that because that's what Paul calls him, the father of our faith. So we meet Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, we get his story through Genesis 12 through 25. If you've been doing our Bible reading plan, you've already read his story. We're now into his son and grandson. And we meet Abraham when his name is Abram. I'm going to refer to him as Abraham in the sermon. And we meet his wife, Sarai. And uh, what happens is their names change eventually. She becomes Sarah. He becomes Abraham. And so I'll refer to them that way. And God comes to Abraham and speaks to him, makes him a promise, and then 25 years, hello, 25 years later, God keeps his promise. Okay, we've been dealing with COVID for two. What if we're just on the beginning of this? 25 years later, God makes good on his promise to Abraham. So Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 4. The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country. He lived in Ur. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? You feel like you're living in Ur right now? The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family. Go to the land that I'll show you. I'll make you into a great nation. I will bless you, make you famous. I will be a, you, in, you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed. And then go down to verse 7. And then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, I will give you this land, because he takes him into this land, I mean, shows him, I'll give you this land to your descendants. And Abraham, Abraham, uh, built 
an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who had appeared to him. So the Lord came to Abraham, came into his life and spoke. There is a God, and this God speaks. He comes into Abraham's life. He speaks to him, and he gives him a command and a promise. And the command is, you live there in Ur. I want you to go to a land where, oh, I'll show it to you when you get there. All right, so I'm here. You're telling me I need to leave, and I'm going where? I, TMI, Abraham, Abraham, that's too much information. I will tell you that when you get there. But here's the promise, Abraham. I, you're going to do that. That's my command. That's... There's a command, but there's a promise when we follow and obey the Lord. He's gonna, he says, I'm going to make you a great nation. And he says that you're going to be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. I'm going to make you a great, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to make you a blessing to all the nations. We'll look again at verse 4. God makes this promise to him, leave Ur and go where I'll show you. And you're going to be a blessing there. I'll bless you. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed. He had faith and he went. He obeyed. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 15. And what you, if you, as if you remember this story, as you're reading through it, God keeps showing up. He keeps making promise. After promise to Abraham, Genesis chapter 15 is another time where he shows up and he keeps making uh, promises. So Genesis chapter 15, 1 through 3, sometime later, and so we don't know how old he is at this point, he was 75 uh, when he started this journey, but sometime later the Lord spoke to Abraham in a vision and said to him, don't be afraid. Okay, let's just stop. Hear what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. You know, that's the most common command in the Bible. Don't be afraid. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I will protect you, and your reward will be great. But Abram replied, O oh, sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? Remember, he, I, I'm going to make you a great nation. And so Abraham is saying to God, uh, don't we need to start with one? I don't have one. You keep promising this great nation, but we just need to start with one. Lord, since you've given me no children, Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, He'll inherit all of my wealth. He's the next in line. You've given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son in your, of your own who will be your heir. So God speaks. God comes into Abraham's life. He speaks to him. He says, Don't fear. I'm a shield to you. You're going to have a great reward. And God keeps making promises. I want you to look at verse 5. Then the Lord took Abraham out and said to him, Hey, look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you'll have. And Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord counted it to him as faith. What we see in this text, you, you see Abraham still asking questions. You, you, God, you said, but I, I, he keeps making these promises, but I don't even have, I don't even have one child yet. And so this, God comes into Abraham's life, speaks to him, makes promises to him. Abraham has been faithful. That faith has come into Abraham's life. And it's grown in his life. He took steps of faith. He's following the Lord. And now God continues to make more promises. And now his faith is being tested. All right, God keeps coming and making the same promise. Are you going to keep trusting? His faith is tested. Feel like your faith is being tested? Turn to, uh, to James. James chapter 1. So 
So faith came into Abraham's life. He was following in faith. It was growing, but then it's tested. And we see Abraham asking questions to God. So Abraham is going through a trial in his faith. Is he going to keep believing the word of God? And what's, his right, what's the right response? And we see it in Abraham. What Abraham does is he asks God. Praise to him and ask for wisdom, which is exactly what we see James telling us to do in James chapter 1, 2 through 8, when he writes, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. <laughs> Welcome to 2022 and all the trials and the the suffering and the pain that awaits us, consider it all joy, for you know that when your faith is tested, just like Abraham's, when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Why does God come in and keep testing Abraham and making him wait 25 years so his faith can grow, so his endurance can be stronger? So, let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. God has your best in mind when he tests your faith. And if you need wisdom, if you, if you get yourself into a trial, if you find yourself in a trial, if you find yourself in a test, you've, you've stepped out in faith, just like Abraham has, stepped out in faith, and then this always happens, by the way, you step out in faith, following the Lord, you're going to encounter some challenge. There's going to be some sort of test. There's going to be some sort of trial. And if that happens, if you need wisdom, if you need, how do I get through this, Lord? Ask our generous God. And he will give it to you. He won't re... He's a loving father. He's not going to rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that you ask in faith as in God alone, as that, that your faith is in God alone. Don't waver for a person uh, with, as a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave as the, of the sea and is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people, they shouldn't re expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world and they're unstable in everything that they do. So you're going to encounter trials. If you're following the Lord, you put your faith in him, you're taking steps of faith, you're going to encounter a trial, just like Abraham did, just like James is talking about. And what James says is when that happens, just do what Abraham did. You just, you pray and ask the Lord in faith, and he will show you. He will give you wisdom. Just ask when you ask. Make sure you ask in faith, trusting in the Lord. And he'll lead you, he'll guide you. So don't be surprised when you find yourself in a trial. It's a pretty natural step. Instead, rejoice. Brothers and sisters, rejoice at the trials that we face. It's not an easy thing to preach. But what James is saying is your faith is being tested. It's actually a good thing. And it's about God's timing. It's not about our timing. And so I don't, I know... I don't know all of the, the trials and the loss and the suffering that you're going through. I do know that we all face COVID here kind of collectively together. But what we see here in Scripture from Abraham all the way to James is that when we go through these times of trials and testing, we're just wondering, God, where are you? God says, the Bible says, okay, and you should. You come, you come to him and ask because he's a good God. He doesn't look down on you for asking him. He loves you. So bring him your request. Tell him you need wisdom. And he's going to lead you and he's going to guide you. And I'm going back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 15. One of the things that God said to him was, uh, to Abraham was, look up to the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you're going to have. And that's the first time that God references the stars as far as his, how many descendants he's going to have. And then the next verse, one of the, it's one of the most important verses in the Bible. That Abraham believed God, 
And what God then in was, did then was credit it to him as righteousness. God then declared him righteous because of his faith. Not because of anything he did. What God was looking for, and as God is looking down upon this earth for those who are righteous and separating them from who are unrighteous, what God is looking for are those who will put their faith in him. And against all odds, well, I'm 75 years old. This really looks impossible. I don't know where we're going, but I'm going to believe in God. That's what God's looking for. Those who will put their faith in him, not in their works, not in anything they've done, but in God alone. Verse 7, then the Lord told him, I'm the Lord who brought you up out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land that you possess. So he What he says to him is, Abraham, I'm the God who, just think back, Abraham, remember to the past, it didn't happen all that long ago, but in your past, I brought you out, I called you out, and I've been faithful ever since, and I'm bringing you into this future land. So there's past faithfulness of God, the future hope of this land that he's bringing him into, and Abraham, I know you're living right here, right now in the present, where you feel everything. And it sure feels like I'm not being faithful, but this is, in the present is where we live out our faith. Right here, right now, is where we enact our faith, where we mobilize our faith to believe in God. But we do that based upon these past stories of faith. Hey, Darren, just talk about that. We... We look back upon these stories of God's faithfulness and we remember God's faithfulness in their life and in my life and we remember those past stories. Those past stories energize our present faith. How are you going to get through this week? Looking back on these past stories of faithfulness, remember God, remembering God's faithfulness. And not just that, not just those past stories, we look forward and hope to what he's bringing. And that's why we're going to sing that song again. So, but we're right here, right now in the present, and this is where the trials are faced. Today, COVID today, family issues today, all happen right now. And how do we get through them? What Abraham is showing us is that we, and what God is telling Abraham is, remember, don't forget, I've been faithful. And as you go on, as you read through Genesis, as he keeps making, as he begins, God begins to making promises to Jacob, or Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. And what he says to them, hey, I'm the God of your father Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And so he's recalling that past, those past stories of faithfulness, and I will bring you into this land. And so there's the past stories that energize us, there's the future that summons us. But right now we have to live this out in the present, and this is where it can be really hard. So I went to seminary in, uh, it was 2004, um, and I went down without a car. I just drove, I just, my parents drove me down, dropped me off, but I was just convinced the Lord had called me. All my friends, we were all kind of going to go, we were all going to go to seminary together, and then they started dropping off, oh, we're, we're going to take some time, but I, I just was convinced, no, God's called me, and uh, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't have a job down there. I went down to Texas and went to Southwestern, and I don't have a car. I don't have a job, but I am convinced, and so I enrolled. My parents dropped me off, and I moved into my, my into the dorm with two of the roommates, and they had already been there, so they had, like, taken over the dorm room that I was in, and I had a corner. I had a bed, had a desk, and a little bookshelf. That was it. I show up with, like, two bags of clothes. That's it. Parents dropped me off and drove back to Missouri. And it was after, after the fact, after I graduated later on, my, my mom and my sister were telling me, uh, when we dropped you off that day, we like left in tears because like, they just left me with nothing. <laughs> I had nothing. I didn't have a job. I didn't have anything. I just, hey, I'm here. I'm, God's called me here. And then, you know, I started working at the library and I, I just loved it. And then I, I, I made some really good friends and they all moved off campus to some, a campus apartment. And I was like, man, you guys... I wanted you here because I can't get there. And they said, why don't you move in with us? I'm like, well, okay, time out. 
I don't, I don't have a car. I don't own a dresser. I don't own a bed. I, I, can't, I can't do any of that stuff. And so one of my friends was like, I got a bed for you. Okay, well, great. I, I don't have a car or a dresser. You know, put, and and they, they start saying, oh, we'll, we'll drive you around. It's like, no, no, no. I like you guys as friends. I don't want to become a burden to you. And then what happened was well, I got an email from a professor, and he said, hey, I heard you're, you need a car. It's like, what? And so I, I, you know, I go talk to him, and it was, it was a Geo Metro. It, it, it's a glorified uh, go-kart. And he, he, it was Dr. Welty. He was taller than me and had like, he had a couple hundred pounds on me. And it was his car, but it, it, he wanted to give it away to a seminary student who needed it. He heard that I had a need, and um, so I called up my friends. I was like, guys, I'm moving out. You know, God's provided. And, it was, and then, then that evening, I went with my friends. We went to go um, uh, do visitation at a church we were doing, where we were kind of working at. And that evening, this, this was really random, but it, I mean, it's not because it's the Lord. That evening, we go to where we're going to go visit this, uh, the, the house, or the, we're gonna, we wanted to go revisit a guy that we had visited before. We get to his apartment. He's not there, but in the parking lot is a dresser that says, free. <laughs> and, and, me and, my, and Justin, my friend, like, he knew the story. He knew what I had said. I need a dresser. I need a bed. I need a... He's like, look at that. There's a dresser. So we loaded it up in his Jeep and brought it home. I was like, that was really random. I, I don't know why I said those three things, and I don't know why the Lord provided those three things for me, but um, that, that for me was a... <clears throat> you know, one of those past stories that you need. Because that was kind of fun. <laughs> um, but other, other things happen later on in life that are much harder harder than that. So fast forward to 2018. And um, I need that past story of God's faithfulness in my life because in 2018 it gets really tested. Lindsay's pregnant, we're having a baby, and we get the diagnosis that this baby has trisomy 18. And, and I've told you this story before, but November 30th, 2018, Nora Faith was born, and we had her for two and a half hours before she passed away. And it, in that moment, in that present moment, you feel everything. And there's all the questions. Talk about this last week. The questions, is God really faithful, Anthony? How can you? That's a, you know, that was a cute story back from seminary, Anthony. You really gonna believe it now? Well, I'm clinging to this future hope that's summoning me. So yes, I'm gonna keep believing, and it's really hard in that moment. Really hard, in that moment to keep believing. But that's how we get through, and I see that in Scripture. How do I continue to stay encouraged? Because there is a there is a God who throughout history has been faithful. And right now in the present, it, you know, it's difficult. But there is, a, there is a hope out there that he is calling us to that is better than anything. And so that those past stories energize me. They're fun to tell. And really as I look back, like, I don't know if I've, if I know I did. I felt, you know, even God's presence in a hospital room. That I, I, I believe it's his faithfulness, it's his goodness. But it allows me to keep pressing on. How do, you, how do we continue to pr keep pressing on in faith and in joy and rejoicing? It's because God's good. He always has been, he is right now, he always will be. Always will be. And that's why we keep pressing on. In Genesis chapter 21, Abraham is 100 years 
old. 25 years later, and Isaac is born. Isaac means laughter. There's a blessing for us when we follow Jesus. It might be in this life. It might be in the afterlife. So what are we supposed to do? How do we get through all this? I want to to show you Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 comes after. So Hebrews is probably like a big, long sermon, and and the pastor of Hebrews has just kind of recalled all these past stories of people who have been faithful to God. And one of those guys is Abraham. Um, and so he tells all these stories, this hall of fame of faith. These, guys, these people believe they kept following God and faith in chapter 11. And then chapter 12, he, he, he writes this. He encourages his congregation with this. He says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, Let us strip off every weight that so slows us down, especially the sin that easily trips us up. Let's just put all that stuff aside and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. And we do this, hear me, keeping our eyes on Jesus. That's how we do this. That's how we get through The present trial is keeping our eyes focused on Jesus. He's the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. How did he do that? Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and he's seated in the place of honor at God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. How do we keep pressing on? How do we face COVID with a smile? What the Bible's telling us, what the author of Hebrews is telling us, is we look to the cross and we remember a crucified Messiah and all the pain that he suffered and he endured, and he did it without giving up. And after all, you've not given up your lives in your struggle against sin, but he has. He gave up his life for your struggle against sin. So what I want to encourage you to do is to get into God's Word. I want to encourage you to get into God's Word. It is um, how I have gotten through is God's Word. I believe there's a God. I believe He speaks. I believe when He speaks... He's speaking truth, and I believe that that calls me to either faith or fear. And he's always been good. He's always been faithful. But the only way I know his word and what he's saying to me is through reading. And so I want to encourage you one more time to get into the word of God. I believe he's going to speak to you. I believe he's going to reveal to you his faithfulness in the past. In the past, But I think there is a living word for him for you today. I think he wants to encourage you and speak to you. He's going to do it through his word. And then I want to encourage you to write it down. I didn't make a big deal of this, but when Abraham, when God spoke to Abraham that first time, he went out and he built an altar. He marked that time. He marked that place. And he said, I don't know, I'm sure exactly what just happened, but God, I feel like God spoke to me. And I'm going to mark that time. I'm going to mark that place. He built an altar. I don't, we don't build altars very often anymore, but you just get a journal and write it down. I feel like the Lord is telling me this. And own it. Put the date down. And then the other thing I want to tell you to do is rejoice at the test. Rejoice when the Lord tests your faith. And I want to encourage you. I believe that God wants to take you from Ur to Isaac. Isn't that awesome? Ur. I just want to get out of Ur and take, take us to laughter. God has a blessing for you, I believe. It comes through faith, this journey of faith. And COVID is a journey that we're all on. Hey, welcome. We're all here. We're going to rejoice in it. We're going to um, seek the Lord in it. And uh, so there's that, that we're all kind of on together. What's the Lord, uh, what are you trusting in him for personally? He's, He's always been faithful in your life. He will always be faithful in your life. And so keep trusting him right here today.
Keep believing in him. I know, I know that it sometimes feels like he is a God who makes promises and then leaves. It was clearer in Abraham's life. Time after time, he comes back to you and he makes promises and he leaves us. Where did he go? Sometimes it feels like he leaves, but he's not gone anywhere. He loves you. He knows you. He cares about you. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author, the perfecter of your faith. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you right now. We come to you right now. And I have lots of things I could pray. But Lord, what I want right now, what we need right now is just you. We need your encouragement. Lord, we need you to come into our hearts in a new and fresh way. For us that are here in this room, For, for those of, of us who are in the gym, for those who are trying to, to listen online, and, and I've listened online. Lord, I know how distracted I can be when I'm listening online. And Lord, what we need right now is, is you. We need you to come into our heart and encourage us. We have no hope outside of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we came in here looking for him. And we want to find him. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just reveal him to us. I pray that he would, he, that he, the man, Jesus Christ, his life, his beautiful life, and his, his resurrection, his ascension, he's at the right hand of God, that he would be our hope. I pray for that. Lord, and I pray for our congregation. I pray for our church, for those that are going through tests and trials and suffering and loss. Lord, you know it can be so overwhelming sometimes. It can be so burdensome. But Lord, I pray that you would encourage us. Be with those families that are hurt and suffering right now. Be with them. And Lord, we, de we declare to you, we are looking forward to a hope that I know the world looks at us and, la and laughs, but we cling to it. We are believers. That's what brings us here. We're believers in Jesus Christ. We're believers that he's going to come back Oh, glorious day. I'd like for you to stand up on your feet with me. Another, we're, we're going to sing this song. I'm, I'll stand up here for the first part of it. But I want to sing this song again, declaring our future hope that's summoning us, that's drawing us, empowering us. We're going to sing about it. We've talked a lot about the life of faith today, but that life of faith begins with a step of faith, trusting in Jesus that he's the only one who can forgive your sins. You can't, you can't save yourself. You can't do enough good works. And, and there is, there's a real sense of where you're, you're trusting your life into his, his hands when you say, yes, I'm going to trust in Jesus to forgive my sins. And if you've never done that, that first step of faith, that's the invitation. I want to, I'll stand up here during the first part of the song, but I want to sing this song. I need to sing, I need to sing this song. But if you need to make a decision this morning, if you want to put your faith in Jesus for the very first time, where he declares you righteous in God's eyes, then you can do that. As we sing this song, you just feel free and come forward and, and tell me, but um, I'll, give you, I'll give you one verse, but then I want to sing this song. I want to sing about our future hope. When heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. Word became flesh and the light shine among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he 
carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh, glorious day, oh, glorious day. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. The hand that healed nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me, living He loved me, dying He saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh, glorious day, oh, glorious day. So that wasn't the end of the story. Here we go. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord, evermore. Death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him from rising again. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh, glorious day, oh, glorious day, oh, glorious day. One day the trumpet will sound for his coming. One day the skies with his glories will shine. Wonderful day my beloved one bringing. My Savior Jesus is mine. Living he loved me. Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh, glorious day, oh, glorious day, oh, glorious day. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being flexible and singing that song for us. Um, yeah, it means a lot to me. She knows we do that. <coughs> All right. Um, thank you, guys, for being here. I, I hope that I hope that you find in the Word of God the encouragement that you need. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just I pray that you would be with us as we leave this place. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen and encourage us. Lord, I pray that you would shape us and form us, that we might look more like your son, Jesus Christ, the author, the perfecter of our faith. We love him. We worship him. 
And Lord, we anticipate his coming and we pray, Lord Jesus, come, come set everything right. We long for your coming. We look forward to your coming. And I pray these things in your son's name. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace.